then I worked on this electrical board here, and I characterized the material material characteristics of all of our parts here. Uh, I'm going to start adding some more electronics, and hopefully I'll get around to showing off the intake later on here. So what I need to do with the electrical board is I need to make a space for the battery to sit. I need to make cutouts for these gearboxes and motors. And then I need to start putting electronics in the places where they belong. So let's get started. I'm going to use the Analyze Interference tool to make sure there's no interferences between the cuts I've just made and the chassis. 
uh, you can see that these cuts are kind of close actually um, but they will do pretty well to make sure that um, nothing is interfering with the gearboxes or the motors and the motors do not quite touch so we're gonna see if that's working out well Okay, so that looked pretty good. Uh, no interferences on either side. I do have to make room for these encoders on these shafts. I think there should be space, but I kind of want to uh, add a little bit more of a cut to make sure that there is. Um. So right there, I've, I've, cut, up, I've cut more, uh, so I should have a little bit more space for that encoder mount to go right there. Uh, and so that's done. Now time to add the battery.
if that's in uh, and that's all constrained up, uh, we're going to take out a little bit more of this polycarbonate so that it uh, fits, so the battery mount fits properly in this space. Okay, so now that that's done, we should have no interference here between these objects, or very little. Um, so I can put the battery in, I'm going to start mounting electronics now. Uh, I do want to characterize these objects as metal, and what type of metal they are, but, uh, so I'll do that right now.
Again, always save your file because you never want to lose your progress. You can see down here in the bottom, I've got all my uh, electronics. So I'm just going to sort of drag and drop and plop those in uh, one at a time.
So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to sort of model everything around this PDP here. So I'm thinking of putting the PDP in the center, uh, like the heart, and then I'm thinking of putting on the corners here, things that you don't really need access to, such as the RoboRio, but things that are like common electrical components I'm going to put on the sides of the PDP uh, or on the back here because I want to have uh, the wires be as short as possible and keep things clean. I'm going to put the talons around it, like sort of like arteries around the heart.
Now you see I have this PDP, uh, mostly flanked by the, the talons that we're going to be using. So there's two ta there's a talon per motor controller, there's four, sorry, there's a talon per motor. We have four motors, which means four talons, and these other talons will go to other mechanisms, such as a lift mechanism, or a climbing mechanism, or a uh, intake mechanism. And you can see that there's space here left for, uh, for example, more uh, talons. Uh, you can also put like a spark motor controller here, or a victor motor controller here. So you can basically do, this is an expandable uh, thing here, but the idea is keep the leads, the distance from the uh, terminals to the motor controllers short, so that you can keep the wires short. So to actually make the decision to change it, I'm going to put the PDP uh, lengthwise along here since it seems like it fits pretty well. And then I'll be able to have all my motor controllers lined up and um, that'll make it easier for the can to go across them and easier for the connections to, to come across.
we got the talons and a line. Uh, this is much better. You got your wires basically being distributed like this, and the can wire skips across from every one to each one. We can. I think we might have the can bus over here, um, since that seems like. Or maybe actually we'll have it on this side since this is where the PDP can is. So we can have the CAN bus here in this small area. Mm. I have to consider that the breaker wires are here, and that's kind of important because breaker wires are, um, well, they are very large and they are hard to move. So. So although I don't quite know where to place the breaker yet because uh, I haven't finished the rest of the robot and it should be in an exposed position, I'm going to put it somewhere around here for now uh, just to make sure that I sort of model it and make sure that it's there for when I want to move it. So now we basically have what we want our electrical board to be some talons, PDP, RoboRio, VRM, and then the uh, breaker over here. Uh, I don't really have router CAD right now, so I'm not going to try to deal with that, but the router will probably go somewhere in this area. And of course we have the battery here. The battery leads will probably be going out this way to the... Um, well, actually... The battery leads will go to wherever the breaker is, and the breaker might be here, because that seems to work pretty well. You run the battery leads around here, you run the breaker into here, uh, but it'll basically, the breaker will just go wherever it needs to, and the PDP will be connected to the battery like that. So I actually decided to put the uh, the can bus or the quote unquote canifier uh, on right here, and I'm gonna move the uh, the breaker back to sort of. I'm actually gonna put the breaker up on this back uh, plate here, since really, you want the breaker to be in a mostly exposed position. And until I know where the other mechanisms on this robot are going, I'm gonna put the can uh, the uh, breaker. I'm sorry, up here.
I'm going to sort of talk about the uh, intake mechanism which we prototyped and which uh, someone else has catted. I'm going to go through, I'm going to talk about the mechanical design of it a little bit, and then I'm going to uh, do a little bit of renaming and fixing of the uh, CAD if I see a mechanical problem. So you've got this beautiful assembly that someone else made. I'll go through sort of how it works real quick. Um, clearly there's a couple of parts here. Uh, first part is this frame back here. So this frame actually has a little mount in it. I'll try to pull it out real quick so you can see it. This little mount, which allows you to mount two pieces of tubing vertically, uh, or like perpendicular to each other. Uh, without needing like a big bracket, it just slides inside and works pretty well. You just rivet it in. Uh, the other thing with this is we have some wheels up here that are going to be powered by a sprocket of some kind. Uh, so you have compliant wheels and then we have a shaft going through them. Uh, this is fixed to this other piece here, which is connected by the same bracket. Uh, in addition to this, we also have another set of brackets, or sprockets, uh, which are connected to a dead axle here. And this dead axle allows this part to spin freely. However, this part is spring actuated back here. The spring has not been catted, but uh, that's spring actuated. And so this is, and then we have another uh, sprocket right here connected at the front by the same method. Uh, so a couple of comments I have about this. So we've got a couple of issues here. First issue is likely going to be this sprocket kind of placement here. Um, so I don't really like how these sprockets are done. And I think that these shafts can be done better and more compactly. And also with a little bit less resources. So we can optimize that a little bit. Another thing is that um, I'd be interested. I want to kind of do a little bit more checking on these brackets to make sure they actually work. Uh, I do not know if these brackets are quite going to work for this purpose, so I got to do a little thinking about that. I want to CAD a hard stop in here somewhere so that the uh, there is indication to the machinist who knows where they need to create like a bolt hole so that they can uh, stop this spring. Maybe a mounting for the spring somewhere. Uh, I got to rename all the parts because while they're named, uh, most of them are uh, common off-the-shelf parts. 
Some of them I want to name uh, something more on the basis of what I've been naming everything else, so during, with the naming convention. And then, of course, you can see that it's all, you know, loose. So I'm going to reconstrain everything, refit everything, and make sure uh, it's all going to work for our assembly. So I'm just going to start with a new assembly. I'm just going to start all over and constrain stuff all myself. In fact, I'm actually going to end the stream right here because I think we've gotten to a pretty good uh, um, stopping point. So I'm going to end this right here and then we'll resume this when I get back and we will continue working on this intake design.